Hi there, welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and this is video 23 in our GCSE Maths Higher Revision course. We're solving linear equations here. Now as always in this video, remember I can't teach everything in this short video. I'll try and explain the basic ideas but you could go to the website for much more in-depth videos. For example, in this topic we're doing linear equations. If you went to the Hegarty Maths site went to Ed Excel higher and went to the checklist. If you look down the checklist in algebra, I have solving one step linear, two step with division, x on both sides, etc. I would suggest working through these uh, videos uh, if you want some more background knowledge. But anyway, we're going to see what where we can get to in this video. So, solving linear equations. We're going to start off with m the most simple examples. The most simple examples are as following. So example one, suppose we had x add 6 was equal to 11. We have to find out x. Now we could guess x or what I prefer is I prefer to subtract 6 off both, both sides. Some students like thinking of the positive 6 going uh, over here and becoming a negative 6. So right, x is left here. We would have 11 subtract 6 x equals 5. Check 5 works, 5 add 6 is 11, we've got it. Example 2, let's do one with a subtract. Let's say something like x subtract 3 is equal to 14. I add 3 to both sides, some students like thinking of that negative 3 moving over here and becoming a plus 3. I don't really like that but some students like that idea x would therefore be equal to 14 add 3, x would be equal to 17. Check it works, 17 take away 3 is 14. Okay, let's do this with multiplying. Example 3, suppose we said that 3x was equal to 24. That's 3 times x is 24. I need to divide both sides by 3 to get 1x. Some students think of that 3 multiplying on this side and going over here and dividing. So your next line, x would be equal to, and write your divisions like this, it's better, 24 divided by 3, x equals 8. Now I want to do one more example of this where it's not a whole number to show you why I like writing it like this. Suppose we had 3x was equal to 5. Divide both sides by 3, or if the 3 moves over here becomes divide, x is 5 over 3. That's not a whole number. It's perfectly acceptable to leave your answer like that as a fraction. Do not decimalize it unless you're asked to. Okay, and then lastly, let's do a divide example 4. Suppose we had that x divided by, I don't know, 4 was equal to, let's say, 6. So we multiply both sides by 4 to undo this divide 4. Some students like thinking of that dividing by 4, moving over here and becoming a multiply by 4. So x is equal to 6 multiplied by 4, x is equal to 24. Check it works, 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. Could be slightly more complicated, I'll just show a different one. Suppose we said 12 divided by x was equal to, I don't know, 3. What we could do is we could multiply both sides by x, or some students like thinking of that x moving up here and multiplying. So 12 would be equal to 3x. Then we divide both sides by 3. x would be 12 over 3. x would equal 4. 12 divided by 4 is indeed 3. So they're the most simple cases. Okay, let's go to slightly more complicated cases. Example 5. Suppose we had more than one operation, something like this. 2x add 3 is equal to 13. Find x. I'd subtract 3 off both sides. Okay, and that would leave me... Uh, or some students like saying that positive 3 moves over here and becomes subtract 3. So the 2x would stay. 2x would be equal to 13 subtract 3. 2x would therefore be 10. Now we want x, not 2x, so we divide both sides by 2, or that 2 which is multiplying goes the other side and divides. x is equal to 10 divided by 2, x is equal to 5. Then check your answer, 
2 multiplied by 5 is 10, 10 add 3 is 13, got it. Okay, let's do one more, maybe where it's a subtract and we get a uh, fractional answer. Let's say something like 3x subtract, I don't know, 5 is going to be equal to 11, something like that. Firstly, I would try and um, deal with this subtract 5. I'd add 5 to both sides to remove it. Some students like thinking of that subtract 5 coming over here and becoming a positive 5. So the 3x would be 11 add 5. 3x would be 16. Then we divide both sides by the 3. x would be 16 over 3. It's not a whole number. Fine to leave your answer like that. Okay, the next thing that you can get, example, let's say, uh, what was that? 7, we might have a bracket. So imagine we had 2 multiplied by 2x add 3 is equal to, I don't know, uh, 15. How would you solve that? Well, first thing is expand your bracket. 2 multiplied by 2x is 4x. 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, so plus 6 equals 15. Now we're in a very similar case to example 5 back here. So we can subtract 6 off both sides. So 4x would be 15 subtract 6. 4x would therefore be 9. And then we can divide both sides by 4. x would be 9 over 4. It's not a whole number. It's absolutely fine to leave your answer like that. Okay, and I suppose the last way it can get complicated is if there are x on both sides. So say we had something like the following, example 8. Say we had something like, I don't know, 5x subtract 3 is equal to 2x add, I don't know, 12 or something like that. Now there's an x on both sides. So what we want to do is we want all the x's to be on the side with the biggest x's. The biggest x is here. So we'd like all the x's on this side and all the numbers on this side. Okay? So, let's try and get all the numbers on that side first. First, let's uh, add 3 to both sides or move that negative 3 over here to become a positive 3. So write down your line of working. 5x, that negative 3 is not there anymore. 2x, add 12, add 3. So 5x is equal to 2x, add 15. Now let's get all the x's together. That's a add 2x or a positive 2x. So we want to subtract 2x off both sides or move that over here becomes a negative 2x. So 5x subtract 2x is equal to 15. And that's 3x is equal to 15. Now we want 1x, we want to find x, so we want to divide both sides by 3. x would therefore be 15 over 3. x would be 5. And check your answer. 5 multiplied by 5 is 25, take away 3 is 22, let's check it works here. 2 uh, multiplied by 5 is 10, 10 add 12 is 22, it does indeed work. Okay, and they're the main cases that come up in the GCSE, um, so now you should be have enough skill there to be able to have a go at some questions. So as always, um, pause the video, have a go, and then... Mark, um, play the video and mark your work against mine. So let's have a look at the questions. Here's the first one. Pause the video, have a go. Okay, so we've got 2y is equal to 8. So we divide both sides by 2, or move that multiply 2 here, it divides by 2. So y is equal to 8 divided by 2, which is 4. y equals 4. Check it. 2 times 4 is 8. Definitely got it right. This one. Some students like saying, move the negative 4 over here, it becomes a plus 4. So t is 7, add 4. t is equal to 11. Check it. 11 take away 4 is 7. Now, x divided by 4 is 3. Some students like thinking of moving that. Dividing by 4 over here it becomes a multiplying by 4. x is 3 multiplied by 4. x is 12. Check it works. 12 divided by 4 is indeed 3. Great. Next one. Pause. Have a go. I'll go through in 10 seconds. Okay, 3x is 12, so we divide both sides by 3. x must be 12 divided by 3. That gives me x is 4. 
3 times 4 is 12, got it. I add 7 to both sides, y is equal to 5, add the 7 now, y is equal to 12, check it works, 12 take away 7 is 5. Two steps here, so first you take away the 8 off both sides, 2t stays where it is, is 3 take away 8. Now be very careful here, 3 take away 8, here's 0, here's 3, you take away 8, you go 8 that way, you get to negative 5. So 2t is negative 5, then divide by 2, so t is negative 5 over 2. Absolutely fine to leave your answer like that, negative 5 over 2. Now this one looks a bit complicated, we want to find y. 2y's divided by 5 is equal to 4. So what we can do is multiply both sides by 5, or if this 5 comes up here it will be multiplied by 5. 2y is 4 multiplied by 5. 2y therefore must be 20. But we want to find 1y, so we divide by 2, y is 20 over 2, y is 10. Check it works, 2 multiplied by 10 is 20, 20 divided by uh, 5 is indeed 4, got it. Next one, pause the video, have a go, I'll go through in 10 seconds. <coughs> Okay, add 7 to both sides, b would be 12, add 7, b would be 19. 19 take away 7 is 12. This one, divide both sides by 5, e would be 40 divided by 5, 40 divided by 5 is 8. 5 times 8 is 40, so got it. Two steps here, subtract 6 off both sides, 4m would be 15 take away 6, 4m would therefore be 9. Divide both sides by the 4, m is 9 over 4, absolutely fine to leave your answer as 9 over 4. Don't worry about decimalising it. Now what we're going to do here, well, um, we've got a negative 6 here, so we're going to add 6 to both sides, so 5w would be 10 add 6, 5w would be 16, divide both sides by 5, w is 16 over 5. Fine to leave your answer like that. Okay, and we're getting close to the end. Two more sets of questions. Pause the video, have a go at these slightly harder ones, maybe some brackets. Okay, so this one here, simple. We subtract 3 off both sides. 2y is 8, subtract 3. 2y would therefore be 5. Divide by the 2, y is 5 over 2. Fine to leave your answer like that. Brackets here. Let's multiply out the brackets before we do anything. 5t subtract 15 is equal to 25. Now let's deal with this the normal way. We've got negative 15 here. I'm going to add 15 to both sides. 5t would be 25 add 15. That would make 5t equal to 40. Divide both sides by 5. t is 40 over 5. That makes t 8. Check it works. 8 take away 3 is 5, 5 times 5, 25, got it. This one here, multiply out just like before, so multiply out first, we'd have 20y take away 8 is equal to 48. Got take away 8 here. Add 8 to both sides, or add 8, so 20y would therefore be 48, add 8, 20y would be equal to 56, and then divide by 20, y would be 56 over 20. Now you can actually simplify 56 over 20, so uh, you can think of a number that goes in, 4 goes into both, so if you divide at the top and bottom uh, by 4, um, you would get um, that divided by 4 would be 5, and that divided by 4, um, you would get yourself um, 14. So y is 14 over 5. Last one, x on both sides, have a go, I'll go through in 10 seconds. Okay, so let's deal with the numbers first. Let's um, get all the numbers to this side and all the x's to this side. So let's take off one off both sides. So we'd have 13x, that stays where it is, is 11x, add 9, take away 1. So 13x must be 11x, add 8. 
right? Now let's um, get all the x's together. So let's subtract 11x off both sides. So we'd have 13x subtract 11x would be 8. The 8 stays where it is. So 2x must be 8. Divide by 2, x is 8. Divide by 2, that would make x 4. Check it works. 13 multiplied by 4 is 52. Add 1 is 53. 11 multiplied by 4 is 44. 44 add 9 is 53. Got it. This one here, do the exact same thing. All the numbers on this side, all the t's over here where the biggest t started. So you've got to subtract 4, add 4 to both sides to deal with that. So you'd have 5t stays where it is, equals 3t stays where it is, plus 6, but then plus 4. So 5t is equal to 3t add 10. Now let's get all the t's together. This is a plus 3t here. Let's take off 3t off both sides. So 5t take away 3t is 10. 2t must therefore be 10. 1t is 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Check it works. 5 times 5 is 25. Take away 4 is 21. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 and 6 is 21. Definitely got it. And that's everything on solving simple linear equations in a quick revision video. Thanks for watching.